So after watching this latest Jujutsu Kaisen episode, I think I finally understand what turned Ghetto to the dark side. I mean, when you think about it, right, you're in the middle of fighting some creepy middle-aged man who, in his dying moments, is seeing his dead dog. And what's our boy doing? Well, he crashes an all-girls school party and basically, with doing hardly anything, takes his glasses off, panties are basically dropping, and then some woman walks over, scoots over, and hands him her phone number. Shit, man, I'd be turning bad too if I'm in the middle of fighting some creepy bastard and you're picking up ladies like it's nothing. But jokes aside, this is another banger episode of Jujutsu Kaisen. Episode 2 of Season 2 just continues to make me say I could watch 23 episodes of just Ghetto and Gojo's backstory here, but despite this being a short arc, I'm very excited to see where they're going to take it from here. Now, full live reaction to today's wonderful Jujutsu Kaisen episode is available on my Patreon, so if you would like to see my full uncut thoughts as I watch today's episode, it's over there if you're interested. Now, the first, like, half of this episode, give or take, is kind of like a slow burn, but man, like, Seriously, we got to like the little credit slate that plays at, at the mid portion of an episode and I was convinced we're five minutes in. So like things are flying by and I am a huge fan of the new production style that they're going with. I think it works excellent with the comedy scenes like the moment when the maid walks in and they're literally stretching this girl. I mean, at first I thought they were twisting her body, but it's just like the comedic direction and just the way they can just so hook you in with that immersive directing. Honestly, the first couple of moments of this episode kind of gave me Chainsaw Man vibes, just craziness in the background as someone's making a cup of tea. You just have like this kissy face demon monster, which honestly, I don't even think there's an anime fan down bad enough to want to get a smooch from that thing. But I love how after ending last week with this big explosion, our boy's chilling with a cup of tea some bastard is getting groped by a horrible monster and as he's trying to hold out on information he shows him a picture that was sent like hey is this your associate as gojo's just chilling basically being like hey man i caught my guy did you catch yours it just is fun it really is but i have to admit now something that i think a lot of anime fans will complain with is how characters will explain their powers to other people it's like okay whether it's your main character or it's the villain They'll stop a shonen battle scene and they'll just start talking about their abilities. Usually that's an eye roll and I think more and more anime fans grow bored of it. But you have to admit Gojo's the exception. So this man is such a badass that as you have a dude who's built like a tank yet wearing a goddamn paper bag over his face. He's holding a girl with one hand and goofing off with the other and they can't touch this. Literally, that's his theme song you can't touch this because I love how it just feels so one-sided that him casually explaining his powers to the man that he's about to kick ass with I mean I kind of like it because there's something about Gojo he's my favorite Jujutsu Kaisen character I think he's a badass I love the fact that when his glasses come off it's a mixture of is he getting serious or is he just gonna be like from Oran High School Host Club where he's just chilling and making everyone love him. It's just as absolutely fun in that moment when he shatters the glass in the building and then he approaches him, you see the energy glow light up, you're like, oh shit, this man's about to die. And he's like, nah man, then just kind of gives him a nice little tap. Like this show could probably do anything it wants and I'm gonna have fun. I'll show this show till the end of times because Jujutsu Kaisen makes me happy and at the end of the day we come to watch anime or movies or play video games because we want to have fun and this show does that. But there's a mystery here, there's the uncertainty, like there's this dude who's chilling watching the boat races and I have to admit for being as much of a dick as he is, you have to admit he's intimidating as hell. So he's chilling, he's eating his food, he gets up to get a coffee, a tea, a drink of some sort, bumps into this poor guy, ramen all over the floor, and yeah, rightfully so, is like, bro, what the hell are you doing? Doesn't even say a word to him, just crouches down, dude doesn't say anything right back, gets up and gets his drink. He doesn't even leave the premises, no, he gets his drink and goes back to his table after being a D-bag. And honestly, you kind of have to respect the intimidating aura. Now, our girl basically has... A ridiculous bounty placed on her head honestly it's like John Wick here I mean like everyone's trying to clean up on the bounty that's gonna expire in a couple of days and this poor girl man like she's just trying to live out her days and it, seriously everything is trying to hurt her right now and it is not looking good but at the end of the day we do have two badasses that are looking out for her and honestly I love both of them I thought ghetto's fight was really fun because 
Honestly, at first what I thought was happening when he jumped through the window and then you see the dog, I thought one of his demon beasts here were like making him hallucinate like his best dreams. But the idea that you come out thinking you have the upper hand because he looks like you ate me. Nope, I have a knife. I'm going to stab your ass. Turns out life flashing before your eyes as you're getting impaled within a blink of an eye is kind of hilarious, but it's also badass. And it's just, it's funny to me to think about the fact that prior, just our boy barging in, taking his glasses off, all the girls want him. And then you have our boy fighting some creepy old man, and on, honestly, it just brings a grin to my face. Now, knowing that this is a rather short arc, I mean, a majority of season two is going to be focused on the next arc. I am excited to see what they do, because while, in a way, the first half of episode two kind of takes it slow and... It's charming, it's fun to watch, nothing explosive happens, but then you can see how quickly things start happening within a blink of an eye, and then it just seemingly doesn't slow down. So, I imagine the remaining episodes for this arc are going to pop off. I mean, both in episodes 1 and 2 now, we've had some fun action animation, but I, like I said, I like the new style that they're going for with the animation. I think it's very expressive, I think it definitely works with the comedy, and honestly, I'm just excited to see what they do. I would like to imagine, though, because... If this is going to be two arcs, right, I would imagine that after, you know, this arc ends, which is, what, five episodes or something like that, probably we're getting the new opening as soon as we get the second arc, which is weird because usually you would get another opening 12 episodes in or something, but I'm excited to see what they do because the thing that I complimented last week, and I'm going to compliment again here, is that the OST is amazing. It's like eight different styles of music throughout this episode. We have classical music as we're watching the boat race. We have this synth wave pop up, we got some heavier guitar riffs that are chugging along, and every time I'm like, bro, I crank up that volume, I'm like, why are they going so hard with such different varieties? But there's something about the OST this season that feels so different than even the first season, and I mean, from top to bottom, it just feels like a passionate season too. It doesn't feel like a cash grab in any way. They didn't just pop it out and said, hey, here's what we have. This is very artistic, it's different, it's stylized, and for me, I love it. Some people won't. They'll say it's too different. They don't like the line work and stuff. And that's fine. People have their opinions. But for me, I'm really, really enjoying it. And I like the mystery of not knowing exactly what's going on, where we're going to go with her being targeted with this big bounty. But at the end of the day, I just like seeing more of Gojo, more of Ghetto, especially before all the bullshit happened with them. So I'm here for the season 100%. Now, of course, those are just my feelings. I'll let me know what everyone thought, whether if you're a fan of that manga or if you're anime original like myself, what did you think of episode 2 of season 2 of that Jujutsu Kaisen greatness? Let me know down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload more videos to the channel. And hey, like I mentioned, we do have that full live reaction to today's wonderful episode available on my Patreon. And while you're there, you can also get a video shout out like Joshua Kingsley, Brett Itzka, Minless, and Fate are getting today. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.